In this problem, we want to calculate the force exerting on the panel uh, given the pressure distribution on both sides. And what we're looking at is a window, say a window on the side of the swimming pool. And this window has on the right side air and on the left side water. And both of those fluids are applying pressure uh, on each side and those pressures are distributed differently in space. On the right side we have air and air has a uniform pressure, a pressure that's the same everywhere in space. On the left side we have water and water has a pressure distribution which is a little bit more complicated. And the question we want to answer precisely is what is the force coming from the right due to pressure? And what is the force coming from the left due to pressure? Yeah? So let me show you how to deal with this. I'll work it out step by step. I'm going to put this so we can keep the data inside for our problem. And we're going to start calculating. So what we have on the right side is the force due to the right side. And the way we deal with this in free mechanics is by doing an integral. And we say the force is the sum everywhere of the pressure, the local pressure, multiplied by the area, the tiny bit of area where this pressure applies, dA, like so. And we do this integral over the whole area of the panel. So it becomes the integral over the panel, over the whole window, if you would like. This force here, this integral here, um, is very easy to calculate because in this case, P on the right side, P is just pressure due to the atmosphere. So it's a constant, it's just one number. It does not change according to A, and so we can get it out of the integral. And this becomes just here, P, multiplied by the integral over, D of, over the whole panel of dA, like so. And P being here, P the atmosphere. And so this is, of course, P atmosphere, multiplied by the integral of dA, here's just A, the area of the panel. And so this is now just a matter of putting the right numbers in. P atmosphere is one bar, but be careful, one bar is not SI units. We need to convert this into Pascals to have SI units and get the correct numbers in the end. And one bar is 10 to the power of 5 Pascals. So it's 1 times 10 to the power of 5 Pascals as pressure. And the area is 3 meters by 3 meters, like so. So that's 9 in total. Whoops, sorry. No, no equal here. I should put here times 3 times 3 multiplied by 3, multiplied by 3. This is going to be pascals, this is going to be meters squared, and the multiplication of those is going to be newtons. And so, of course, this is 3 times 3, 9 times 10 to the power of 5. 9 times 10 to the power of 5 newtons is the force, the force on the right, like so. We could leave it like so. Whoop, sorry, we should move this up. We could leave it like so, but um, in practice in engineering, uh, we like to have newtons, kilonewtons, or meganewtons. And so this turns out to be 900 thousand newtons, so 900 kilonewtons, yes? So this is the result that I'm going to highlight in the end, 900 kilonewtons. Just before we move on to water, let's just pause and ask ourselves how big a force this is. And the measure I like to have for this is what's, this, what's an object that has a weight of 900 kilonewtons? Well, the answer to this is easy to calculate. Um, one kilogram has a weight of approximately 10 newtons. And so 900 kilonewtons, 900,000 newtons, is corresponds to about 90 tons. Yeah. So I'll just put it here in, in comparison as 90 tons. Yeah, 90 tons is the weight of two fully loaded trucks. So that's a lot of force. And this is the force uh, that applies on a window that has three meters by three meters. On a window that has one meter by one meter, you would get 10 tons. Yeah. So it's a lot of force that we have due to pressure due to the atmosphere because one bar is a very high number and this the reason for this is that we live at the bottom of an ocean of air that's about 100 kilometers high and so the pressure in which we live every day is very high the atmospheric pressure okay so much for the right side let's now look at the left side let's come back on this and have a look at this equation that we have here we have pressure due to water is one times 1.2 times 10 to the power of 5, this is its starting value. And then every time um, you go down with x here, so let's have a look at x, x goes down in this way. So you start at 1.2 times 10 to the power of 5, 1.2 bar, yeah? And then you go down, at the, the, every one meter you go down with x, 
you increase the pressure by a value of 9.81 times 10 to the power 3. Yeah? So almost 10 to the power 4. Okay, this to us is just magic. It's coming from the sky. Um, but we'll see the reasons uh, behind this equation, uh, the physics behind this equation, and the chapter that's dedicated to pressure later on. Yeah? Um, by then, we'll see probably that this looks suspiciously like gravity and this suspiciously like the density of water. Uh, but that's a secret we keep for later. Yeah? At the moment, to us, this is just magic. And now what we want to do is calculate the force due to water on the left side with that pressure distribution. So let's take a look at that. All right, let's go. So the force um, applying on the left side is, again, the integral of P dA. The sum over the whole panel of the local pressure force multiplied by the local amount of area. And P, what is this time P? P is this whole big expression that we have um, written down here. So I'm just going to be rigorous and uh, just transcribe it over here. So we have P panel here. And P becomes 1.2 times 10 to the power 5 plus 9.81 times 10 to the power 3 x yes this is the value of p and then i integrate p with respect to area da like so now from a mathematical point of view um, this is a bit problematic because we have an x inside the integral and then we have da um, which specifies according to which properties we're doing the integral and we need to translate one into the other so let's have, let's take a look at da now and let's try to express da as a function at least partly of x I'm going to take the panel. Um, I'm just redrawing the panel that we have over here, three meters by three meters. And on this panel, um, we take a little width, element of width here. And this element of width, um, I'm going to call it dz here. dz is because we are looking at the distance along the, this direction here, which is the distance z here. And I'm also going to look at a tiny bit of depth, depth x. So I'll call it dx, yes? And so I'm going to look at a tiny bit of depth dx, a tiny bit of width dz here, and the product of those, this is going to be my dA, yeah? Like so. So I can write that dA is equal to dx dz, a tiny piece of the window over here. I do not learn this by heart. I find it out every time, depending on the coordinates of the problem. This is because sometimes you will have x, y, z in different positions. And you need to adapt to the coordinate system of your given problem to be able to figure out what your area um, is equal to in terms of infinitely small coordinates. So now let's take dA as equal to d, dx, dz and write it in here um, in place of dA. Yeah? So we have the integral over the whole panel of 1.2 times 10 to the power 5 plus 9.81 times 10 to the power 3 x yes and then we have here dx dz now i could leave here a single whoop i'm sorry about this i forgot always forget uh, to move up um, the, the sheet of paper so you can keep an eye on on my paper so what I did here is I just took dA from that equation here and I transcribed this into dx and dz. I could leave a single integral here and write it as the integral of the whole panel. But now I have two um, infinitely small uh, components over here. So I could try to write it as a double integral. Is the integral of the integral of something. Yeah, The integral over dz of the integral over dx of that piece here, right there. From where to where do we evaluate these integrals? Well, let's look back at the problem. We're gonna go in the z direction, yeah, in this direction here. We're gonna go at z is equal to zero, and we're gonna start from zero and go to z is equal to three. So I write here for dz, zero to three. And we're gonna do the same thing for the direction x. So we start at zero here, and we go down to three over here for x. So let's think, Every, each time, um, the integral from 0 to 3 over here. Okay, this looks a little bit tricky. 
uh, to play with, but you're going to see mathematically it's quite simple. A double integral works as so that you do the first integral, you hide the inside of the first integral, and you do the first integral from 0 to 3 of everything that's inside to dz. Yes. So a way of representing this in your mind is to go from 0 to 3 of a big bracket here, and this big bracket inside is the number that is the integral from 0 to 3 of ta -ta 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 dx dz, like so. Yeah, I'm not rewriting it, I'm just in my mind conceptually replacing the inner integral by just a pair of brackets. And this I'm going to then use um, to figure out the trick. Everything that's inside this bracket here does not depend on z. There is no z anywhere in this parenthesis and dx does not depend on z either. So what I can do is to say this is just the bracket that I had before multiplied by the integral from 0 to 3 of dz, like so. Yeah? And so let me, do, let me just now replace the bracket by the inner integral. It is the integral from 0 to 3 of 1.2 times 10 to the power of 5 plus 9.81 times 10 to the power of 3x dx, yes? And now I multiply this by the integral from 0 to, th to 3 of dz, which I'm just right now going to call just delta z. I could just replace it by 3 meters, that's also fine. I'm just going to keep it as an abstract representation right now. Yeah. And so now it's just a matter of here uh, carrying out the integral, because all I have now is x and dx with a single integral. This should be doable. So let's, let's go with this. The integral of 1.2 times of 1.2 times 10 to the power of 5 dx is going to be 1.2 times 10 to the power of 5 x like so plus 9.81 times 10 to the power of 3 x dx will integrate as one half of x squared yes and I now close my brackets and I evaluate this function this integral function here uh, between the limits x maximum and x minimum, which in this case is 0 to 3, yes? And also multiply this by dz, by, sorry, delta z at the, at, the, at the bottom over there. And so now let's just put numbers in, write out the whole number thing before I type it into the calculator. So it's going to be here, 1.2 times 10 to the power of 5 multiplied by 3 plus 9 9.81 times 10 to the power of 3 multiplied by 0 0.5 multiplied by 3 squared multiplied by 3, like so. Like so. And so now just typing this into the calculator here. Yeah, I did it just previously for you. Um, I get this result here. I get 1.4824 times 10 to the power 6. And I remember now we had calculated the whole time coming back at the at the very top here a force what is the unit of force newtons so i write down newtons at the bottom right here newtons this is the force on the left side and again in engineering we like kilonewtons mega newtons and so on and so forth so i can write it here as fl is equal to 1.4824 mega newton and this is what i'm going to highlight in my answer like so. Yeah. So this is how you deal with a pressure distribution that is not uniform, and when you want to calculate the resulting force applying on a single panel.